All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Sports Cards Live, recorded, because this is not live, this is recorded, and this is the seventh installment of the eBay Ended Items Watch List Review. Let's get into it. And as well, guys, there is a playlist for this series on the YouTube channel. You can check that out and go back and see what else we've been watching over the series of these episodes. All right, let's jump right in. We're going to start with one of these 2023 Topps Chrome Platinum Super Fractors. You know, I love these cards. We've seen the Jackie before. This one ended. Don't know why. Haven't seen it relisted. So it's off the it's off the radar for now. Maybe we'll come back to it again in the future. We have an Alex Ovechkin third year the cup scripted swatches out of 25 cells for 378 usd seem cheap for me uh, but these scripted swatches people don't like them as much as a limited logos or an honorable numbers or an emblem of endorsement they're out of 25 you know it's okay the autograph is okay but anyway it does 378 us and i i was expecting it to go for a little bit more even though it is you know the one of the lower desirable uh, inserts in the cup as far as auto patches go. We have this 2010 Jonathan Taves. Uh, this is the signature patches numbered out of 75. I love the swatch on this one. Nice four color patch from the Blackhawks offered by Probstein. I, I'm just seeing what are Taves cards doing. He's a guaranteed Hall of Famer. He had a ton of hobby love, but he's kind of fallen off the, the hobby train lately. Anyway, 208.5 usd on that and i again watching it just to see what would happen all right this card we've seen before on the show this is the 2012 essential credentials future wayne gretzky bgs 8.5 out of 34 offered by this cool grod sports now this card was listed earlier on we did covered as i mentioned anyway this time it sells for 1824 dollars usd i brought up the prior listing this time here it sold for 1691 us but it was relisted where we just saw and i thought well let's look at the bidder so let's look at the bidders for the one that didn't get paid and you can see bidder with 110 feedback obviously didn't pay for it because the card was relisted here did that same bidder bid again with 110 feedback i don't see them in the bid history on the one that sold here on july the second then we look at for the set the under bidder who got, maybe they they got beat by the shill, I don't know. 1,067 was this guy right here. They bid up to 1,666. Did they bid this time? Again, we're looking for 1,067 feedback. And there they are, right there. They bid 1,236.66 this time, but last time they were willing to pay up to 1,666. So did they feel they got shilled and were a little apprehensive to bid more? That might've stopped them from bidding more money the time it got relisted because they thought, hey, there's shillers out there. I don't want to get, get caught by those guys. What about this guy here, 2280? Did they come back or did they bid the first time? Yeah, 2280 bid the first time up to 1105. And the second time where it actually sold, they were willing to come up to 1199. So I think that's about right. You know, they, they came up a bit, but very much within the range the first time. In any event, the card does, we think, we'll see if we'll see if it if this gets relisted or not, but it seems like it finally sold for 1824 US or 2486, which is actually more than what it sold for uh, when it sold and wasn't paid for here back on June the 12th. So just about a month later. All right. We have here a 2005 The Cup John Sebastian Jaguar base patch parallel or variation. Uh, BGS 6.5. I was watching this because I do I do collect this set and I need this JS Jaguar. And it's numbered 6 of 10. It's an all-white patch. They're all like that. This card was ended by the seller. And uh, why? Well, because I reached out to them via this sticker right here and we did an off eBay deal and I ended up getting this card. It's on its way right now and I got this card for $60 Canadian shipped with tracking. So, you know, I like that this guy had that there. We got to do the uh, the Instagram deal instead of the eBay deal. And that card is on its way. That is card number 72 towards 93 in the set that I'm working on. Love that set. All right, guys. Next up, Ray Bork, Limited Logos, 2014. Just a really nice Raymond Bork, Boston Bruins, game use patch auto card. And again, I, I thought, you know, maybe I'll bid on it when the card ends. I did not, but I was still interested. It sells for $324 Canadian on 18 bids. 
Nice card. Feedback, uh, Seller only has 18 feedback. I don't know if that helped or hurt them. Couldn't help them though. All right, guys, here's another card that went unsold last time we looked at it. So it sells this time for 2,788 Canadian via channel partner Slab Sharks. And here's the last time. So these guys have a really, really stringent policy where if you don't pay for your items within four days, they get relisted. Too bad, so sad. Because they want to pay their, their consigners as soon as possible. So if not, it's relisted. So I don't know what happened here, why it didn't sell or why it got relisted after this time. Uh, they do show that it was relisted right there. We saw it. I just want to see if the link was there. If we go into the bidders on this one, and this sold June the 20th. Now look at this. A zero feedback seller bid $2,800 and $2,955. So, and they're, now they're kicked off. And I do believe that Slab Sharks will share information with eBay as to, you know, unpaying bidders, non-paying bidders. So maybe that's what, maybe they got this guy caught, uh, kicked off of, uh, of eBay. In any event, let's look at this though. Bidder with 4536 feedback was willing to pay 2905. They got shilled and didn't win. 4536. Did they bid the second time? Let's have a look. They did. They came up to 2588. They came up to 2588 when it actually sold, but on the one that didn't sell, they were willing to go up to 2905. Maybe they got a little apprehensive thinking, you know what? It didn't sell the first time. I got shilled. There's shillers out there. I'm not going to bid as much as I otherwise would. I, I want to protect myself from those false, you know, incremental bids. So they didn't. Instead of bidding, uh, instead of willing to go up to 2905, this guy was only willing to go up to 2588 this time. Also, a couple of other uh bidders here 68 feedback 21 feedback on the card that sold 68 and 21 do we see that here we don't really see those guys bidding it up the next time it gets listed but we do see 58 and 863 58 and 863 let's go back here 58 and 863 do we see either of those guys coming through and bidding on on the final uh when, when it did most recently sell and I'm not seeing them here. So it's sort of interesting. These are the kind of things that you can do. I'm not great at this, like, you know, investigating bid patterns, but you can look for people bidding again. Why are they bidding different amounts? Do they have lower high feedback to get some comfort? You know, in any event though, the card, it does sell this time here for 2788 Canadian, whereas the first time it was bid up to 29.55. So I think that's a really fair result for the consigner who consigned this to Slab Sharks because 29.55 was not necessarily realistic. However, however, you'd think you should be able to get 29.05 for it because this guy, this guy didn't even bid on it now. And again, because you know he only came to 25.88, but there were two new bidders that came in and bid 27 up to 27.88, right? 7.63 here ends up winning it and uh, 763 didn't even bid the first time. So sometimes, you know, you can get a new bidder who didn't see the auction the first time uh, and you just never know what the results will be. All right, guys, this is the, this to me is the, uh, the item of the week. Not for good reason though, not for good reason. Uh, this is a 2023 Connor Bedard Opeachy paper rookie card in a BGS pristine black label slab. This card sold for $1,775 Canadian. Uh, I think this is, I think, I think that whoever buys this card and bids it up to $1,775, how many people bid over a thousand dollars on this card? You have 24 unique bidders right there. You got fit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. There's eight, at least eight people that were willing to pay at least $825 on this card and to me that those are eight people that just i mean you're wasting your money in my opinion you are giving a, a humongous amount of value to the plastic and the and the little black label here these cards like how different can this be from the nicest slab in a psa 10 or even some bgs 95s or bgs gold label 10s like you have to understand that grading companies are so inconsistent there, there's no way that this card is worth $17.75, in my opinion. Let's go to Card Ladder and see some past sales. You can see right here, the black label sells for $13.04. PSA 10s, even back in March, were only doing $3.55. What is this card worth today in a PSA 10? Let's go to date sold. 
today in the PSA 10, look, a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars, you guys. And then some people are gonna pay 1305 because it's in a in a fancy black label Beckett slab. Clowns, clowns bidding that much money, in my personal opinion. I just think what what a waste. What a waste of money just to get the black label. Anyway, congratulations to the Slab Sharks consigner who managed to finesse $1,775 out of this card. That is great for them and whoever owns that card. Um, listen, some people like this stuff and, and, and I guess that's okay, but I can't sit here and tell you that I think that that's smart. No, I think it's, personally, I think it's stupid. I think stupid's the op opposite of smart. I think it's stupid. That's just me. All right, let's keep on going. Sydney Crosby 2023 Outburst Gold, one of one from Upper Deck Series 2. I believe Series 2, maybe extended, I'm not actually sure. Uh, offered by Savage Cards out of Quebec. Uh, I again, I, I love these outburst gold. Sydney Crosby sells for three thousand fifty Canadian. I was it was nice to see such a big bid there. How many people were willing to bid, say over two thousand bucks? You have one private, so one, two, three, four, five, five. There was a lot of bidders in on this. Twenty four unique bidders in on this Crosby. And if this, like, this is a card that I was I was interested in for myself. It got out of my range. But it's also not his Penguins card. It's the All-Star. Personally, I'd prefer to have the Penguins card, which likely came out in Series 1. All right, guys. We have next a pair of Austin Matthews Rookie Year Emblems of Endorsements. We have first a BGS 7 with two two-color patches. A little bit of white there. A little bit of white there. You can see some white there, some white there. Easily two-color patches there. BGS 7 sells for 3,000 Canadian. And then we have a BGS 8.5 sells for 4,000 Canadian, just over. And it's got two nicer patches. I think these patches are nicer than the other two patches on the previous card. And it's a higher grade 8.5. Corners are an 8 on this. That's really the only weak point on this card here, the 8.5. Whereas the 7, you're getting 6.5 on corners and 7 on edges. So in my opinion... I don't care a ton. Like, I, I first of all, I don't need these cards graded if I had them in my PC. And second of all, uh, the grade is just not as important to me as the patches. I think it's correct that this one sells for more than, than this one. And I think these cards landed pretty much right where they should, right where they should at three and 4,000. I think that's a fair disparity between these two different cards. Oh, interesting to see that the seven doesn't have an autograph grade, but the eight and a half does. So that might, you know, I know people love that. And let's just look at the autograph here. Really nice on the 8.5, on the 7, really nice as well. So I don't know, maybe uh, I could, because the way the hobby works, I could have seen even more spread between these two cards because of the grade and the autograph grade. So nice to see that people, I feel, according to me, valued those two cards appropriately. This next one, just a beautiful Connor McDavid uh, limited logos tribute limited logos from from 03 exquisite uh, look at this beautiful beautiful card 2021 numbered out of 10 only great autograph a nice acetate layer on top of this card makes for such a beautiful piece you got a nice three color patch i love it i was watching out of curiosity it sells for five thousand eight hundred and fifty six dollars we have a rookie year Limited logos, Nathan McKinnon. He won the Hart Trophy, guys. Most valuable player last year in the NHL. Not Connor McDavid. Nope, Nathan McKinnon won that. Rookie rookie limited logos. Decent patch. Would be nice if it had some maroon in it, but still sells for $2,085. And note that this is not game worn. This is a photo shoot patch. 2006, the Cup signature swatches or signature patches. Alex Ovechkin, numbered out of 75. This is a card that uh, I love these cards. I have from this set, I have the Gordie Howe, the, the Wayne Gretzky, and the Mario Lemieux. And I would like to add a Crosby and an Ovechkin, both being second year signature patches with game used mem. So I'm watching. I still want one of these. I didn't bid on this one. I still want one. Uh, and maybe I'll find one eventually. This is a nice four color. And this was offered by Slab Sharks. Here we have, guys, some, I got to tell you, some, Leaf cards have been catching my eye lately, whether it's Pearl or Ultimate or Superlative. They've been catching my eye. And this one, I just thought it's a, you know, first of all, it's a nice patch. Mario Lemieux, one of one, Leaf Ultimate from 2015. It's a nice patch. 
obviously the image, you know, they've had to airbrush out all, all uh, traces of the Pittsburgh Penguins logo here. So it does look funny, but it sells for 160 bucks Canadian. If this was licensed, it would sell, would have sold for probably triple that, maybe four times. And if it had an auto, well, now you're over a thousand bucks. A really, I thought it was a nice card, you know, but you have to be able to get past the fact that there's no Penguins logo on the front right there. I want to see what it sells for. It sells for 160 Canadian. Next up, a couple of C56s, the first set of hockey cards. We have the Lester Patrick in a PSA 3, does 1577. And the Frank Patrick, his brother, in a PSA 3.5, does 2276. This Frank Patrick, if you don't know, guys, this is the first ever hockey card. It's card number one from the very first set of hockey cards being the Imperial Tobacco C56 series. And the C55 was the second set. It came out the year after. It's it's kind of backwards in the nomenclature, but it is what it is. And I watch these end live. I kind of watch, and these cards shot up in the final seconds, basically from about, you know, 976 here, July 4th ends at 2211 you can see these three bidders all came in with less than a minute to go and the card went from basically about 950 to 1577 that being the lester patrick while the frank patrick ends at 2276 and uh, you can see it ended at 2212 on july 4 you can see this bid came in with a minute left as did this one and this one and this one so this card basically goes from i don't know i'm gonna say about 1488 to about 2276 in the final minute i have copies of both of these cards i have the complete set actually of c56 so i like to see what they are selling for and i do believe that my copies are both in higher grade actually my frank my my frank patrick card number one i own a psa5 in this so i love to see such a great sale on a psa 3.5 gretzky Autograph cup base card buyback out of five sells for eleven hundred dollars. Beautiful card, you know it's raw, which is fine, but a great auto. Only five made and a nice Edmonton Oilers jersey. I just wanted to see what it would sell for. Next up, guys, we have two Mario Lemieux auto patches from the Cup. This one is phenomenal. Look at that patch, Stanley Cup commemorative patch. Beautiful, bold, bright autograph. Cards numbered out of fifty sells for three thousand dollars. Okay. Remember that when we look at this next auto patch, which is from 09 Emblems of Endorsement, numbered out of 15, beautiful, bright, bold autograph with a three-color patch here and a one-color jersey piece here. That should have been a patch. I, I think that one got through. Uh, kind of, anyway, should have been a patch there because Emblems of Endorsements are always patches, not jerseys. In any event, this card sells for twelve twenty six. It's not a bad-looking card. This piece is a bit, bit of a mark on it because it's not a patch. But twelve twenty six for this card, or three thousand for this card, is the difference worth it? Is the juice worth the squeeze? There is this card at three thousand really, you know, worth about seventeen hundred and seventy five dollars more than this card here, Canadian. I don't know, not to me, but people love unique patches, and I can see why this one does so much. I'm personally not a big fan of that patch. I would prefer Penguins colors to this orange and blue and black and silver. But that's just me. I'm probably in the minority there, and I'm okay with, with that. All right, let's keep on rolling, guys. A little bit of non-hockey here. David Robinson, 2013 Flawless Auto Patch. I did Listen, I remember David Robinson from the 90s and uh, one of my favorite basketball players in the 90s. So I watched it just to see. I'm trying to get a feel for some of these basketball auto patches. Nice patch, nice three-color patch with, with stitching and angles going on. Nice autograph. 435 us or just under 600 canadian it sells for nice card you know i wasn't really a bidder on it i was more just interested next up jerome aginla the cup tribute rpa his rookie card was from 1994 i believe 93 94 95 in there this is a tribute to the to a, a cup rpa design i love cup tribute rpas i love jerome aginla I would have bid on this car, but to be honest, even though it's a four-color patch, I just don't like the patch. It doesn't, it doesn't seem very feng shui to me. You know what I mean? Like with that, I just don't like the the angles. The the I don't know. So it's a cool patch, I guess, but just wasn't the one for me. So I, I laid off. Goes for six sixty-five Canadian, which is still very respectable. All right, this one's interesting, guys. 
Ron Francis buried treasures from Nat from the one year opinion he ever made national treasures hockey sells for 234 US or 320 Canadian. I was watching this because I recently sold a complete set of these over. Oh, it took me a couple of years, but you know, I sold them singly and I sold the Ron Francis not too long ago. My copy I sold for 700 Canadian and it does 320 here on eBay. So I don't know why, maybe because it was out of the U.S. and people, you know, Canadian bidders didn't see it or didn't want to buy it out of the U.S. I'm not exactly sure why it only did 320. These are amazing cards. These are these are really grail type cards for player collectors. Uh, you know, whoever bought it from me, I, you know, I got, I guess, too bad, so sad. What can I say? But uh, I think somebody got a steal of the deal here at 320 Canadian. All right, another basketball card, you know, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson. How can you how can you go wrong with these two guys? Sells for sells uh for 355 US, 485 Canadian. Again, game worn, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Upper Deck Ultimate, always a beautiful design. I was watching again, like on the Robinson, trying to see, get a good feel for these basketball patches and auto patches. And uh, you know, if I'm ever gonna buy one, a uh, combo of bird and magic would be right up my alley. Team with Solani. This is a 2023 Black Diamond Band of Color, one of one. You know, I think somebody sent it to me like, hey, this might, because I collect Solani. You, you may know he's my all-time favorite professional athlete. And, um, but I'm, I don't like the card. It's gimmicky. There's nothing special about it to me except the one of one. It's got these five or six colored diamonds in it, I guess, which is kind of cool. A little gimmicky, but kind of cool. But not a card that I felt was gonna get into my collection but i want to see what it would sell for that's 590 canadian and um you know cool but not for me another cool leaf card here guys this is a dual auto patch mario lemieux brett hall now it is i wish it was pictured uh uh horizontally but in any event this is better than the last mario lemieux in my mind because there's no there's no opportunity for a leaf to have to to have to airbrush out any team logos they can just put the players you know head and shoulders on the card couple of nice autographs and two very nice patches this is an awesome card guys like i think that that leaf yes it's unlicensed but they're making some really nice cards so if you can get past unlicensed and sticker auto you're getting a beautiful card and it's such an affordable way compared to the licensed upper deck products to get into some great cards of great players you know great in that you still have sticker autos, which I don't like, but I'm starting to make some exceptions for certain leaf cards because they just make a look at the pretty foil, a pretty design, just a nice card, nice card overall. Victor Hedman, OPG Platinum Retro Golden Treasures. These are hockey's super fractors, guys. This is the one of one. Doesn't get a bid for 199 Canadian. And I mean, he's got Stanley Cups. I think he's got Norris Trophy. Victor Hedman, he might be the next captain now that Stamkos has gone to Nashville. Again, I just thought this should get a bid. It didn't, and I, I wonder where those Tampa collectors are. Another Solani. This is a premier acetate stars patch. I was watching just for fun. I used to have one. I have the one on one parallel to this. Uh, I just want to see what it'll sell for. It does two and a quarter Canadian. I do watch Solani cards. And then there's this one here. This is a card that was sitting on my watch list for quite some time. Uh, months, I would think, maybe even longer. I don't remember when it was listed, but uh, in any event, this was on my watch list, and it's a cool card. This memorabilia is equipment bag, guys. This is a piece of memory. This is a swatch cut out of an, a Wayne Gretzky equipment bag. This is not a jersey, a glove, a pad, nothing. Beautiful autograph, Oilers uniform great looking card they were asking 4000 canadian i'll show you what it sold for in a moment let's go over to 130 point sells for 3000 canadian so they took 25% off the price and accepted a $3000 canadian offer on it uh, the seller did here work at 83 you know i guess my question to to you guys if you want if you're watching and want to leave a comment is what do you feel like what do you feel how do you feel about an equipment bag memorabilia card I mean, if it's all upper deck can get for Gretzky, I guess you got to take what you can get. But for me, I think that's, uh, I'm going to draw the line and say no equipment bag pieces in my collection. Team with Solani, Sixth Sense Wizards die cut out of 100 from 1998. These are my favorite inserts of the 90s is this Wizards, Sixth Sense Wizards. I like this more than everything else out there, more than Run for the Cup, more than Star Quest Gold. 
Uh, even more than, well, atomic refractors are right up there for me with this one right here. I was very seriously thinking about buying this card. I don't have a copy of it, but condition wise, it just didn't do it for me. A few issues, mostly on the edges on the back, but also right here on the front. And I'm just going to wait for another copy. I'm not in a rush uh, to get one. I will wait and see if one comes up. And then finally, the last card of the night was this Patrick Mahomes Donruss Optic Vinyl One of One from 2021. We covered this last night on MC Monday's Live. But, you know, I just thought it's a, first of all, Donruss Optic Gold Vinyls to me are nicer than Prism One of One Golds. And I think even there, they're out of five now. This is One of One. I thought, I just want to see what it would sell for. And this card jumped up last night as we covered it live. It was a lot lower than 5,800. I forget where it was maybe in the 2000 range, but it jumped up to 5811. I thought that was a, a good price for it. So uh, those were, that's it guys. That's it for episode number seven, I believe of this eBay ended watch list series where I go through these cards. Thanks for watching guys. Let me know if you have any comments or suggestions below. And uh, with that, have a great rest of your week.